This presentation examines the z-test for proportions. We will examine problems in context or word problems. So recall when it's fair to use this test. We must satisfy the conditions for the normal approximation to the binomial, which means that both NP and NQ have to be large. N is the number of trials. P is the probability of success on a given trial. So NP is, in essence, the total number of successes. Similarly, n is the number of trials, and q is the probability of failure on a given trial, so that nq is the total number of failures. And we want both to be greater than 5 for this model to work. So here's an example. A report from the opposition political party states that 40% of registered voters oppose a proposed piece of legislation. And a consultant believes that the proportion is actually lower than that. So the consultant randomly selects 200 voters and finds that 64 of those 200 oppose the legislation. So what does that tell her? Does that tell her that indeed she's correct, that the proportion is lower, or might the other political party be correct in claiming that it's 40 percent? That's what we're trying to answer here. So can she indeed conclude that fewer than 40 percent of all registered voters, notice she only has 200, her 68 out of 200 represents a statistic for a sample, but she wants to know something about the parameter for the, from the entire population. So can she conclude that fewer than 40 percent of all registered voters oppose this piece of legislation? So first off, we have to establish the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis has to have an equal in it. Can she conclude that fewer than 40 percent of all registered voters oppose the legislation? What she wants to say typically is in the alternate hypothesis. So H0 P equals 0.4. Notice P is a parameter. In H0, we always include a parameter. In H0, we always include an equal sign. She wants to conclude that 40% or fewer oppose the legislation. So she wants to show it's less than 40%. So HA indeed will be less than 40%, less than 0.4. So our next step is to compute the test statistic. So she has 200 voters and 68 opposed legislation. So that will give us our p hat. p hat will be 68 out of 200, which of course is 34%. Now once we have that, we're going to compute our test statistic. p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq over n. p hat is 0.34 minus p. p is 0.4 divided by the square root of pq over n. p is 0.4. Q, of course, is the probability of failure. So if P is 0.4, Q is 1 minus 0.4, or 0.6, and N, indeed, is 200, since she selected 200 voters. So you plug all those numbers in. We have Z is 0.34 minus 0.4, divided by the square root of 0.4 times 0.6 times 200, and we will go ahead and do the computation on Excel. So you'll notice I've put in headers, and I've put in numbers, and now I'm going to just write a small piece of code for Z. So z equals p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq over n, so p times q over n. And the result that I get is negative 1.732. So the test statistic z is indeed negative 1.732. OK, so what's our next? thing to do, we have to compute the p-value. So we have H0 and HA, and we have our test statistic Z. Now looking at HA, we see HA is p is less than 0 0.4, so we have to shade to the left of the test statistic. So the test statistic here, Z is negative 1.732. We want to find what's in that little piece of area. One tail test, we're only going to measure the area in the one tail. So we're going to ask many tabs, CDF, negative 1.732, semicolon normal 0, 1. Recall for a standard normal distribution, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. The number that comes back to us is 0.0416. So that little bit of area corresponds to 0.0416. So our p-value is 0.0416. And now we have to decide whether we're going to reject H0 or fail to reject H0. And the question comes down to whether the fact 
P is a small number or a large number? Well, 0.04 is kind of an interesting one because it sort of depends on how you define small. But for the most part, we are going to define small as 0.05. And relative to 0 0.05, 0 0.0416 is indeed small. So if the p-value is small, what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is to reject h naught. So please understand why we do that. Assuming h naught is true, what's the likelihood of getting a sample as extreme as the one we're given or more extreme? And if we think that probability is small, then we conclude maybe the null hypothesis wasn't correct. Maybe we should throw out the null hypothesis and state that we have evidence for the alternate hypothesis. So now we indeed have to state our conclusion in context. So if we throw out H0, we're going to say that we have evidence, indeed, that P, the population proportion, will be less than 0.4. So the question is, can she conclude that fewer than 40% of all registered voters, she only had a small sample, can she conclude that 40% of all of them, fewer than 40%, will oppose the legislation? And indeed she can. So here the evidence supports the claim that fewer than 40% of all registered voters oppose the legislation. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. According to a recent study from the Center for Disease Control, 20.6% of U.S. adults are current smokers, are smoking now. And it is believed that a higher level of education is associated with a lower likelihood of smoking. So a researcher is going to select 100 people with at least a bachelor's degree, and he finds that nine of these people are current smokers. And he wants to know whether or not he can conclude that the proportion of people with bachelor's degrees who smoke is different from the national rate. So this is a question about medicine, and oftentimes we're doing medical questions. We use an alpha equals 0.01. So this is going to find small. If you're smaller than 0.01, we're going to say we have significance. If you are not smaller than 0.01, we're not going to have significance, which means smaller than 0.01, reject H0. Greater than 0.01, fail to reject H0. So first we have to establish our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. So the Center for Disease Control says 20.6% smoke, and the researcher wants to determine if the proportion of people with a bachelor's degree who smoke is different. Different is the key word here. So what is different going to tell us? Different is going to tell us that we're going to do a two-tail test, or P equals 0.206, the national rate, versus P is different from 0.206. P doesn't equal 0.206, two-tail test. So again, he selects 100 people and finds that 9 smoke. So his P hat is 9 out of 100. Wants to construct the test statistic, P hat minus P divided by the square root of PQ over N. So P hat is 0 0.09 minus P is 0 0.206 divided by the square root of PQ. What is PQ? Well, P is 0 0.206. Q would be 1 minus 0 0.206 divided by N divided by 100. So the formula is going to be Z equals 0 0.090, just making it three decimal places, minus 0 0.206 divided by the square root of 0 0.206 times 0.794 divided by 100. And we will go ahead and use Excel to solve this problem. So here's the spreadsheet we worked with before. Our p hat this time is 9 out of 100, or 0.09. The p that we're comparing it to is 0.206. And q is, of, point, of course, 0.794. The n that we're working with here is 100 person selected 100 people, and you'll notice that the Z is computed automatically for me since I wrote the code last time. So the test statistic that we have here is Z is negative 2.868. So we have computed our test statistics, so our next exercise will be to find the p-value. So here's H0 and here's HA. We recognize HA is p does not equal 0.206, that is a two-tailed test, so we have to go both sides. Our z is negative 2.868. Since it's a two-tailed test, I've also got to put positive 2.868 on the right. And my p-value will correspond to the sum of this little area and this little area. And I will get this little area on the left using the CDF command. So 
we're going to say CDF negative 2.868, normal 0, 1. The number that comes back here is 0021. So we have 0021 in the left tail. We have 0021 in the right tail. So the p-value is the sum of those two areas. The p-value will be 2 times 0 0.0021 or 0 0.0042. And the question we have to ask ourselves now is, is that p-value small? So indeed, we have the p-value is 0 0.0042. And you will recall at the start of the problem, we said use an alpha of 0 0.01. And indeed, that p-value is small relative to 0 0.01, 0 0.0042 is smaller than 0.01, so our conclusion here is to reject H0. If the p-value is small, we reject H0. And finally, we're going to state a conclusion in context. So the question was whether or not people with a bachelor's degree smoke at a different rate than the general population. So we asked the question, can the researcher conclude that the proportion of people with bachelor's degrees who smoke is different from the national rate? And indeed, the evidence supports the claim that the proportion of people with bachelor's degrees who smoke is different from the national rate. And that will conclude this presentation.